let's have our first tutorial on modified node analysis. Consider this very simple circuit. It is our first example. That's why it's so simple. It has only independent sources, round sources. Let's solve the circuit. By that, I mean find the voltage of every node, find the current in every branch, find the power in every element, including whether the element is absorbing the power or delivering that power. Let's begin with the nodes. Choose a reference. In this case, I'm choosing the reference at the bottom. It could be a binary node could be this node here, this binary node, that binary node, this two node, this one, that one. You have many possibilities. Identify every node. I chose to call them one, two, three, like so. Of course, identify only the true nodes. Now choose the branch current direction in every branch, but not in branches where you have current sources like this one, because then the direction in here and the direction in there for that current is already given. And that is also true when you have controlling currents or controlling voltages. Those directions are already given. Now, the first question is, is there any controlling variable, any controlling variable, any CTL equation? Of course, no, because this circuit was chosen to be this simple. No CTL equation in this one. Is there any evil branch in this circuit? Yes, it is. Only one. There's one. Let's write an equation for that evil branch. And the equation is the voltage of the positive node is higher than the voltage of the negative node by 5 volts positive node is the voltage of the negative one plus the value of the source. In this case, V2 is V of the reference 0 volts plus 5. In short, V2 is 5 volts. That is the evil equation number one. But that evil equation includes one additional unknown. It's current. The evil current Ix through the evil branch. We need to solve for that current as well. Now we write a KCL nodal equation for every node, but not for the reference. I repeat, we write a KCL equation for every node, but not for the reference. That KCL equation for the reference would be just a linear combination of the other three and apports no new information to the mathematical solution of the circuit. Let's begin with node number one. KCL for node number one, currents that go in, 5 amps, currents that come out of there is this one, V1 minus V2 over 2 on our branch, and V1 minus V reference minus 4 volts over 2 on RV branch. KCL for node number 2. Oh, currents going in. V1 minus V2 over 2. V3 minus V2 over 3. And that is equal to the current coming out of that node number 2, which happens to be the evil unknown current Ix. 2 down, 1 to go. KCL 3. Be careful with your computation to make sure you get the right results. We engineers make mistakes and people die. This is a picture of the bridge near Quebec City over the St. Lawrence River at the exact moment when the river, when the bridge is collapsing and falling into the river, killing people. I repeat, when we engineers make mistakes, people die. KCL for node number 3. Currents going in, 10 amps. Currents coming out, 5 amps at the top. And V3 minus V2 over 3. 
Now we have four equations, the evil one that we already wrote, V2 equals 5, and these three KCL equations. We solve the four of them for the four unknowns. The four unknowns are V1, V2, V3, and uh, the evil current, Ix. Solving them gives us that V1 is 9.5 volts above uh, the reference node, V2 is 5 volts above the reference node, and V3 is 20 volts above the reference node. The evil current is 7.25 amperes. Now, after solving that exercise, I want you all to stop for a moment and consider this surprising possibility. We have been nicknaming a V branch as evil branch. Are they truly evil? Imagine that in the same circuit, we were not interested in the current in the evil branch. We don't care about that. We don't want to compute it. Mm -hmm. Then, if that is the case, it may happen that the V branch actually is heaven sent. It's more an angel than an evil branch. Why do I say that? Because that V branch is telling us that this node is higher than this one in voltage by 5 volts. If this was node 1, this would be V1 and this would be V1 plus 5. If this was V2, this would be V2 plus 5. This is the reference. The voltage here is 0 volts plus 5. So you see that branch is reducing the number of unknowns by 1 instead of adding one additional unknown. In short, if I don't care yeah, for the evil current, that source tells me V2 is actually 5 volts. Mm -hmm. And I can replace here V2 for 5 and here V2 for 5 as well. So V2 is not an unknown anymore, so we do not need to write KCL2. And we end having only two equations, KCL1 and KCL3, and two unknowns, V1 and V3. We solve them. Let's now work on the solution of those two equations with two unknowns. Of course, if we look carefully at the equations we got in this case, we realize that each one of them is independent of the other. This is an equation only on V1, and we can solve V1 from there, and this is an equation on V3. So they are decoupled equations. But let's assume that we didn't notice that, or that they were actually coupled equations. And let's write on like so. On the calculator, the equation writer, and I write 5 equals 2, 5 equals 2, V1, minus 5, select, select, divided by 2, select, plus V1 minus 4, V1 minus 4, select, select, divided by 2, that is our first equation, we go for the second one. 10 equals 2, equation writer. 10 equals 2, 5 plus V3 minus 5. V3 minus 5, select, select, divide 3, enter. Those are the two equations, right? And they look fine. Now I I declare them to be a system of two equations. I say, make me an array with those two. That is a system of equations. Now I have to tell the calculator what unknowns I want to solve for. I want to solve for V1. Enter. I want to solve for V3. Enter. Don't make a mistake of asking for a V2, all right? Because there is no V2 in this equation. equations, and the computer will complain. Now I say those two, I want you to create a, an array with those two. That is the set of unknowns. Now I'm ready. Go to the symbolic solver here. 
ask for a linear solution and it tells you v1 is 9.5 volts and v3 is 20 volts and you are ready to continue with your solution And we get V1 is 9.5 volts and V3 is 20 volts. Of course, we don't get the solution for 725. By the way, the not so evil branch, let's call that the angelic branch, gave us this piece of information that V2 is 5 volts. What happens if we really needed this current? Oh. It's easy. You know V1, V2, and V3. You can compute this current and you can compute this current as well. You use KCL here and find what is the current. You add them together, right? Absolutely. Let's move on. Let's say that I replace the names of the nodes with the values of the voltages in each one of the nodes. So 9.5 volts, 0 volts. 5 volts and 20 volts, the values that we computed a moment ago. Well, this current then is 5 amps. It's given by this current source. This current here is 10 amps. is given by this current source. That current is just 9.5 minus 5 divided by 2 to 25 amps. This current here is 20 volts minus 5 volts divided by 3, 5 amps. This current here is 9.5 volts minus 0 volts minus 4 divided by 2, 2.75 amps. And what about the current here if we did not compute it? Well, we just apply KCL here and say we add together 225 and 5 and we get this current that has to be 725 amps and the solution is completely there. Now that we have currents in every branch, let's compute voltages. The voltage in this resistor, of course, is 4 times 5, 20 volts and the polarity is like this because the current is flowing from the right to the left. The same way the voltage here is going to be 15 volts and the voltage here, the voltage here is going to be 2 times 225. Yeah, this is 30 volts, 5.5, 4.5 volts with that polarity. Now that we have the voltages in all the resistors with the correct polarities given by the currents, we move on. We say, I want to find out what are the voltages in each one of the current sources. What is the voltage here? What is the voltage there? Please don't tell me the voltage there is zero, because you know better than that. For the current source, we do not know the voltage until we compute it. And that is what we're going to do. I'm going to use KVL and I will choose a loop where I know all the voltages minus the voltage in that source. So let's begin with this one. The voltage in that source, which I'm going to draw plus minus like that. I could have drawn it the other way around. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I will compute it using a KVL trajectory where I know all the voltages minus that one. For instance, I could use this trajectory. I can say in that loop, the addition of all the voltages, yeah, going up and coming down, it has to be up to zero. Well, I begin my trajectory at this point, start point, and it's my end point, And I chose to travel this trajectory clockwise. Going from this start to the left, I'm going up by 30 volts. Going up by 30 volts, that's why I add plus 30 volts. I keep going, going up by 5 volts more. Well, 5 volts more. And here, I go up by 15 volts more, plus 15. And here, I go down by question mark and I arrived at the end. Negative question mark, that is zero. That means that question mark is 50 volts. The voltage in that source is 50 volts. That is not the only way you could have computed that voltage using KVL and the trajectory. For instance, you could have done this. 
In this trajectory also you know all the voltages minus question mark. Try it. That is the equation, the KVL equation, and the solution again is 50 volts. But of course this one has more terms, the possibility for errors is greater and you need to work a bit more. Personally, I like this last one the best. You see, you don't have to follow the wires of your, of, of your circuit. In here, this is what I do. This is what I do. I know, I know, for instance, that from here to here I have 30 volts, and from zero to here I have 20 volts, and then I go down by a question mark. If I do that, that equation is going up by 30, going up by 20 and coming down by question mark and the solution again is 50 volts any closed trajectory mm -hmm. when you add up all the drops and all the climbs you get a zero and you can solve for any of one of them now let's do the same for this source I am assuming the polarity for the voltage in this source at the top to be in plus minus as shown. That is, arbitrary for me, I may get a negative number at the end. And now I choose a KVL loop where I know all the voltages minus that one. I write a KVL equation and I solve for the question mark and I get that that voltage is 9.5 volts. Now that we know the currents and the voltages in every element. If I know V and I in an element, I multiply them to get the power. Depending on the relative polarity and direction of that current and that voltage, the power may be absorbed or delivered. There you go. There you go. Let's start computing those powers. Just multiply V, I and check the polarities. In all resistors, the power is going to be absorbed, and the convention is it's going to be a positive number. Like here. 4 times 20 is 100 watts. In source A, this A means A. Source A. In, a, in resistor A, sorry. 100 watts. Now, it's absorbed power, so that's why it's positive 100 watts. For this one is 9.5 volts times 5 amps, 45.7 watts in element D. I call that source D. Why negative? Well, check it out. The current is flowing yeah, from low to high through that source. That means the source is delivering power. That's the reason for this negative sign. The power in that source is negative 47.5 watts. And we keep going, 70, 75 positive watts, negative 500 watts, 300 watts, 15.1 absorbed watts, 11 absorbed watts, 10.1 absorbed watts, 36.3 absorbed watts. So you see there are two sources delivering power, the one on the top, 47.5, and the one on the right, 500 watts, delivered power. Apropos, if you add uh, together the delivered power, which is 547.5 watts, and you add together all the absorbed power by all the other elements, guess what? They are the same. It makes sense, right? Yeah, it's the principle of conservation of energy in a closed system, and that is what the circuit is supposed to be a closed system.